quick to ask. Um, earlier you were mentioning how you spent three years, four years designing these solid works. Does that mean in in Indo, in there's no like designated group of CAD engineers? So this is designing all these devices. And I would like to like add another question to it. Um, I think this kind of experiment you need ultra high precision. I would imagine there's always compromise between materials or uh, the sensors that are available, or whatever. And ideal uh, design of the device. Has there been any compromise that you have to make, and that would have that would possibly affect precision of the data? Yeah, yeah, it is exactly because of these complicated trade-offs that uh, it takes a physicist design it, um, and not a professional engineer. Not to say anything bad about professional engineers, but um, you know, you can't just say, oh, I'm going to do microwave background and measure 310 to minus 7, and these are the specs. <laughs> no bid for it. <laughs> you have no bid. Okay. Um, you have to strip it down to the level of, I'm going to produce a tank with this shape in SolidWorks. Now fit for it. Then you get a few bit. Um, and it, it is exactly because of these complicated compromises. For example, I talked about rejecting most of the 100 watts of radiation that comes through the window. Ultron was using an aluminum pipe, which rejects 99% you know, of that radiation, but it's also opaque uh, in microwave. Okay, so these things, you know. You just have to find the right materials uh, to do the experiment, and you have to know the mechanical thermal properties, and, as well as um, microwave properties. For example, we discovered, I was surprised, that high purity alumina, uh, even with 99.99% uh, purity, can be opaque uh, if it has the wrong type of impurity in it. Not only you have to pay attention to the percentage, you know, the purity of the percentage, you have to know, care about what's in that 0.1%. If you have, uh, it turns out, potassium oxide or ferric oxide, then you know, it becomes opaque. Even it only you know consists of you know, 0.1% of such you know trace amount of uh, contaminants. You know, all of a sudden you need to know chemistry, you need to know thermal. You don't, you don't even know any of that if you're into it. Any other questions? Yeah. Thank you for a nice talk. Uh, would you mind to share some suggestions for students who are interested in the field? Talk to. <laughs> 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 for opportunities. Yeah, Charlie is spending um, leasing us on a regular basis in the long run. But in any case, you are welcome to talk to me here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any other questions? friend thinks that the basic logic of this experiment is that you use your uh, this um, primordial gravitational wave which modifies the CMB background and use the CMB background and test it so uh, it's like identify the primordial gravitational wave but could it be any kind of exotic transient gra gravitational source like very strange dark matter planets or supernovae that also modify the CMB background in the past, then you can detect it or um, yeah. produce yeah. a Yeah, it's certainly a possibility. Um, so the nice thing about um, this nice BMO theorem is that it's so precise. So if you just inject something else, it'll show up in BMO. So that's a good thing, because so far we've seen nothing new, despite the fact that Planck has measured the depth. 
So in fact, the punk, um, my punk collaborators are all disappointed <laughs> that you know a standard model fits their data. So, <laughs> so the fact that you know, you know, any kind of disturbance can create demo is a good thing. That means you know it's it's a very clean system that any that that's potential for. Uh, I guess your worry is whether that those kind of uh, foregrounds can can confuse the data. Yeah, I mean, actually, I want to ask: Is it possible to collaborate bicep and LIGO, or maybe experiment like that to you know um, identify some source or some uh, some kind of gravitational source at the same time, or um, I don't know. So remember the wavelength that we were talking about. Is billions of light years. Yeah. Okay. So LIGO was only built a few years ago. Yeah. It doesn't monitor, you know, metric for billions of years. No, just the, the scale is just too different. Yeah, LIGO is looking for the superficial object like black holes. So LIGO is looking for the like yeah. mass objects in the universe, which produce a large gravitational waves. Yeah, so basically and its capability is far from being able to detect the demo we are looking about here. So you mean that for those things that LIGO can detect, it's pretty much unable to modify the gravitational, uh, the, the CMB background, which can contaminate this no, data? No, but the other way around might work. <coughs> so in principle, the, the, cosmic, the gravitational wave <coughs> background created during inflation had a high frequency component. So in principle, you could um, indeed, as people thought, you know, in the you know, 80s, that you'd use a interferometer uh, to look for primordial gravitational waves. So it's possible. But the frequencies that LIGO and LISA will be operating at will, you know, I mean, they're designed to look for astronomical sources. Mm -hmm. So those are their foregrounds for primordial gravitational waves. So you have to operate at a different frequency than those frequencies. And to be honest, I don't know what that frequency would be. Is it um, perhaps at higher frequency or lower frequency than a uh, few hertz than, uh, than LIGO uh, and LISA? But, but it's possible people talk about it, but it's like, um, it's like you know, a very hard project for your grandchildren. <laughs> Before LC was turned on, then it, it, they were supposed, if we don't see Higgs, it's also a victory. Right. Is there any the same scenario? No, like not seeing R is also a victory? No, I think it's a major result still if we don't see any R above our, uh, above our point of one. I think it's still a major result. Um, but it's not as huge as uh, real detection. Uh, because in addition to its distinguishing model, I still think, you know, if you detect R, um, you know, significantly, you, you, you provide strong evidence for inflation. Yes. So there are these two things. But if you don't see it, you know, those other models will still survive, and, you know, you ruled out, you know, uh, axiom, monotomy, and m squared, phi squared, that's still a big achievement, but it's not as exciting as uh, seeing the smoking gun of inflation. Well, we all hope for the best. Yeah, but we can't control it. It's been determined <laughs> long time ago. <laughs> Any more questions? From the back, maybe? I don't know. No? Okay, so if not, then uh, let's uh, thank the solid board again. Yeah.